Welcome back. In this part of the lecture, we will talk about expectation. So the expectation e of x of a random variable x is defined to be this sum. We sum over all the possible values of i that x can take on, but then it is a weighted sum. The value of i is weighted by the chance that x will be equal to i. So the intuition of expected of x or the expectation of x, so these two are the same, okay, is the average value of x when the experiment is performed many, many times. It is because when the experiment is performed many, many times, so among, let's say it is performed, let's say, one million times, so there are some cases that the value of x will be equal to i. Let's say 300 cases that it is equal to uh, the value of i, which is equal to 15. Then if we talk about the average value of x, then the value of 15 will be multiplied by it ha uh, the number of times it appears, let's say 300 times it appears, but then it is eventually, because we are doing average, it is going to be divided by this 1 million. Now, if such a case occurs, then the value of 300 divided by 1 million is really corresponding to the probability that x will be equal to the value of i, which is 15 that we are talking about. So by weighting the value of i with the corresponding probability that it occurs, then we get a weighted sum of the possible values that x can take on. So it is the average value of x. This is a definition of the expectation, but alternatively, we have another definition, which is equivalent. So here, I will state this as a lemma because we use the previous as the definition. So expectation of x or expected value of x can be, can be calculated by this formula. This time, we do not look at the values of x that it can take on, but we look at all the possible outcomes that, that is occurring in the sample space. Now for each outcome, let's say omega, we find out what is cor the corresponding value of x, x omega. And then we multiply by the chance that this omega will occur. And then we claim that by doing this summation, we can also get the same value of expected of x. So why? Okay. So here, we use the picture proof to help us. Okay. So on the left-hand side is the original definition of the expected value of x. So here, let's say this is the sample space, and then we are grouping the outcomes like this so that we group the outcomes by the value of x that it can, it, it can take on. So all the outcomes here will have the x value equal to i, all the outcomes here will have the x value equal to j, all the outcomes here will have the value equal to k. Now, in the previous definition of expectation, we will see that we are going to sum over i times probability of x is equal to i. So here we will see that all these things, we will make the total probability of all the outcomes inside, which is probability of x is equal to i, and then all these things will be multiplied by i. But on the other hand, if we look at, so this is the right hand side, this time if we look at the outcomes one by one, then within this group, each little outcome will have the value of x omega here, which is equal to i because it is in this group. And then for, so this x omega here, for this particular group, it is i. And then we multiply this one with the probability of omega. So in that sense, for all the outcomes within this particular region, each of them will be multiplied by i, and the total probabilities of them will be equal to probability of x is equal to i. So if we sum over x omega and probability of omega for each omega, then we should get the same contribution for this group of outcomes here with the same contribution of this group of outcomes here in the summation formula. So in that sense, we will see that the two formulas, that one that we see here in the original definition, 
and one that we are seeing here in this lemma, they are counting or they are computing the same thing. So that's why they are correct. Okay, now we are going to talk about a very important result called linearity of expectation. Let us take a look of the theorem. So first of all, we, we claim that for any random variables x and y, the expected value of x plus y, so this is a, a new function, x plus y, will be equal to the expected value of x plus the expected value of y. And if this is true, then we can further make a corollary. So this time, it involves more than two random variables. So suppose that we have random variables x1, x2 up to xk, then the expected value of the summation of xi, so this is a new function, we add all the xi's together, so this is a summation of xi, the expected value of this one is equal to the summation of the expected value of individual xi. Okay, so expected summation is equal to summation of expected. Okay. Okay, why we call this a corollary? Let's take a look of a special case. x1 plus x2 plus x3. So in that case, k is equal to 3. So first of all, we see that you can treat x1 plus x2 as a function, big function, let's call it y, and x3 as another one. So expected of x1 plus x2 plus x3, you can think of this as expected of y plus x3. So in that case, we can apply the previous theorem to make it into something like expected of y plus expected of x3. And after that, we can further decompose expected of y into expected of x1 plus expected of x2. So in that case, we successfully use the above theorem to get the corresponding case for k is equal to 3. And then we can repeat this idea for other larger values of k. Okay, so that's why we just need to prove the first theorem, and it is enough to talk about, uh, to, to, to help us to prove the corollary. So how do we prove the theorem? So it is actually easy. We are going to use the, 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 the definition or the lemma that we see, okay, about expected value of x plus y. So here we are going to look at each outcome omega, one by one. So expected value of x plus y can be written as a summation of all the omega of the function x plus y multiplied by the probability of omega that it occurs. So this is just from our lemma. But now, this is a function, x plus y is a function. So the, so the summation of two functions on a particular uh, input value omega will be equal to you take x of omega and you take y of omega, you add them to together. So this is actually the meaning of x plus y. Now, because we have this one, then this summation of x omega plus y omega, we can separate this into summation of x omega plus summation of y omega. And for each one of them, we are going to multiply with probability of omega. And finally, it is easy to see that the first part is expected of x, and the latter part is expected of y. So in that case, then we have proven our theorem. So let's have an example. Suppose that we have an experiment that we are going to roll a fair die two times. We let x1 to be the result of the first row. We let x2 to be the result of the second row we let x to be the sum of the two results. And then we want to find out what are the values of expected of x1, expected of x2, and expected of x. Now expected of x1 can be computed by seeing that for each of the value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, each value will have a chance of 1 over 6 occurring. So expected value of x1 will simply be equal to 1 times 1 over 6, plus 2 times 1 over 6, and so on and so forth, up to 6 times 1 over 6. By doing some very, very quick calculation, we find that 
this this total sum will be equal to 3.5 so the expected value of x1 here is equal to 3.5 and similarly for expected of x2 instead of talking about the first row we talk about the second row and we will see that expected of x2 is the same as expected of x1 because it has the same formula and it turns out that it's going to be again 3.5 now finally, how about the expected of x? Okay, expected of x, we can of course calculate this by using definition because we can look at each outcome one by one and then we count the chance for each outcome occurring and then we get the weighted value of this outcome. So this will be the expected value of x. But on the other hand, we see that for each outcome, the value of x is always equal to the value of x1 plus the value of x2. So what does that mean? So it means that x can be expressed as the summation of x1 and x2. So big X is equal to x1 plus x2. So by linearity of expectation theorem that we have just seen, we will see that expected of x is equal to so this expected of x is equal to expected of x1 plus expected of x2 so so this is equal to what this is equal to 3.5 plus 3.5 which is equal to 7 okay so this is uh, important remark so for linearity of expectation it works even when the random variables are not independent. So we do not need to have independent things for linearity of expectation to work. So for instance, we can let x to be the outcome of a die throw. Then expected of x plus x squared is equal to expected of x plus expected of x squared. Now clearly, x and x squared are two random variables such that they are not independent. If I tell you, the value of x, then you should know what is the value of x squared immediately. So by telling you the, ex the, the value of x, it changes your view about what the value of x squared could be. So in such a case, these two are not independent. But even if these two are not independent, we can still write down expected of x plus x squared is equal to expected of x plus expected of x squared. So linearity of expectation works here. And then we can further uh, do some similar things. This time, given a variable x and a certain constant c, we can create a new function called c times x, right? The expected value of this c times x is actually the same as c times expected of x. We are not going to show the proof here. But the proof is really the same as we have proven expected of x plus y is equal to expected x plus expected y before. The same, the same idea. Now because this is correct, we can further make a corollary. So this corollary is really the, 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 the meaning of linearity of expectation. So let's see. So this time, let's, concern, let's consider random variables x1, x2 up to let's say xk and constants c1, c2 up to ck. Then the expected value of the linear combination of these functions or these random variables is equal to a linear function of the expected value of these uh, random variables. Is that okay? So expected linear combination is equal to linear combination of expected. Okay, so, so here, that's why, because we are talking about linear combination, so that's why we have the linear term here. This is the linearity of expectation. Okay, so that's all for this part.